Hello everyone, Alex here, welcome to episode 86 of my Sinton Let's Play. So I'm back here in my HV Solar Array factory, just taking a quick look. As I previously said in previous episode, uh, every here and there I come here and grab whatever solar panels that are available to me and place them around here. I already got six medium ones and basically only two more and I'm gonna have my first HV one. Uh, also, I did previously when placing this, I didn't place a cover here and I said that it should be fine. The red snow signal should not connect to mass fabricator. But apparently I was wrong. And the thing is, you might not see, think it's such a big deal, but the problem is, uh, even though the resonance signal is only, I think, a tenth of a second, or even a twentieth of a second, since I'm ticking it every half a second, between either 10 to 20% of the time, this mass fabricator is not working. And that's actually quite a, bird, a big number. So I did add the cover here to completely eliminate the resonance signal, and it's now completely uh, ignoring it. So, yeah, it's working as it should. Uh, I didn't make any changes, if you missed my previous... Uh, the last time I was here I was just changing all the long distance filters to transposers. Again, just to make sure that I eliminate any possible large backlogs of things. Alright, so there are a couple of major changes um, to my netherrack quarry. Uh, the first one is this. Uh, you wanted to get create a complete square, but because I added two more rows of magmatic crucibles, and every magmatic crucible essentially needs uh, seven and a half engines, I basically created the first two rows were 64 engines, uh, but then every time every 64 engines you get a spare of four engines. So since I completed the square, I took out four sections. Basically, those are four, four sections missing removing that extra 16. So I have a total of 20, uh, 240 engines um, working on 32 magmatic crucibles. Same design. I did add one more um, magmatic engine here to power this a little bit more. However, there is a very crucial thing that I did change here. It's look, it looks the same uh, on the surface, but I did add, as you can see here, a tubing network. It's a very tiny change, but it will be quite effective um, this tubing network will take every two minutes and will simply take one stack out, out of here. Now, why am I doing this? Officially, uh, first, essentially the first time I placed this was basically to make sure that whenever uh, no machine needs any netherrack, uh, it basically shuts the quarry down so there is no bounce back and nothing gets jammed. However, once I once I jump to 32 magmatic engines and uh, magma crucible, it seems to be that by the time that there are bounce backs in the tubes and they all make their way into the relay over here, there is this uh, section of time where basically there is this window of time where the magmatic crucibles eventually will run out in all of the magmatic crucibles, all the netherrack will run out where this will still be full because there was a very large bounce back in the tubes before all of them will fill, were filled were full and then it all got here and there was a large build up in here so basically every 2 minutes i take out a stack send it over here and then simply again make sure that all of them are full and whenever all of them are full and they all move all the all the spare netherrack moves here then again it shuts down it may look a little bit redundant, like something that's simply pointless, but it does have its use. Mainly, all of them are now working, all of them uh, have a full amount of netherrack, and since all of them have a full amount of netherrack, it stops. This is basically the final result. Since I'm not wasting any netherrack, because if this really will be full and this quarry tries to mine something, the netherrack will simply spill out, and then that's not helping me very much. However, while building all of this, yes, I did get to the final, to the point where I'm getting a slight uh, surplus of lava over time. You can see that all of those uh, geothermals are full, and even uh, those two that are still sometimes working, they are almost pre pretty much full. Uh, coupled with the fact that even those geothermals start to get full. And this is fine, but this is still 
not the amount that I was expecting previously when I was pumping from the nether. I was getting a serious amount of lava, it was insane. Obviously I was pumping lava directly and not dealing with all this silly monkey business. But for the time being it's gonna have to do, but uh, I'm pretty sure that in the future I'm gonna find a lava material page for Mistcraft and create a designated age specifically designed to pump lava from. But for the time being it's fine. Now one additional change, we may seem silly. I did have those two uh, kinetic motors still here, they're still working, you can see they're, still, they're generating their energy. However, I did add this giant array of solar panels. Uh, I decided that I don't know if the problem is I'm doing something wrong or I don't know what, but it seems simply the power that they generate the currently those kinetic motors is simply not simply not enough. And I did have a lot of nicolite and uh, coal and sand, which is a lot very easy to get. So I just created a ton of those solar panels. If you don't know solar panels, simply a dot wafers, blue dot wafers with the blue alloy ingot, and this is simply sand and coal and nicolite. So it's it has essentially it has no price at all and I do need energy because one additional change I made off screen was add the batteries as I've said add a battery to each one of those machines has its own separate battery so they do take quite some time to charge up but you can see the speed that I'm, you can see the speed I'm out mousing over here it seems to be like what 20 micro joules per tick something around there and uh, not per tick per second pretty much one micro per tick something around there and multiply that by four and also take into consideration the fact that uh this centrifuge is running it's still running and yeah there are some machines uh, taking energy as well as my induction furnace basically i'm generating energy that, that's uh, no doubt about that but yeah all right so finally I think that's everything that I made. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all the changes that I've done. Uh, actually, one more thing. I'm not sure how or why, uh, but for some reason I f got to the point where all my generators are full on blaze rods. And so finally the generators that I've been placing here started working again. So what I did is actually connect them, connect that power network. I don't really want to take out all the blocks here. You know, let's just do it uh, for a second. You can see the the cable, the fiber cable going down here is basically eventually connected to the same network that comes around here. So those generators will both power this MFSU and also go directly to the mass fabricator. So because I have that and also the geothermals are back to work to working other. I uh, reinstated the 11 overclocker upgrades that I had here and now again there are no spills or anything. So once again I'm creating UU Metro at the proper speed that this was creating it previously. Alright so yeah I'm pretty sure that, that that was it. I was playing quite a lot of screen and just trying to get to that good point where I can actually start doing stuff with my tier 3 extra bees machinery without uh, stopping halfway, that may be the case, uh, I don't know, but yeah, so in the previous episode I started, I, was, I managed to extract on my first try um, the serum, the Valen species serum, and actually I upgraded it to the excellent quality. So the next step in line, eventually what I'd like to do is have a princess, uh, take for example a stony princess and inject it with the Valen species uh, gene. So Right now I have the excellent quality Valen spe Species Serum. Now what I'm going to need to do is actually charge it up. I can of course uh, duplicate it, but at the moment there is no need. So now next step in line will be to charge it up. As you can see it has durability. Every charge is basically one point of durability. I think it can hold up to 16 charges and that's basically the full uh, durability bar. So I'm going to let it do its job and going to quickly get over the night. Okay, here is something that uh, I'm not familiar with. Apparently, whenever a serum gain charges, the quality may drop. I don't know if that's intended or not, but that's just happened. So, I'm gonna let this, uh, I think I'm gonna go for a full charge. I have a nice amount of liquid DNA, there is no problem there. So, 
Yeah, I'm gonna let it get a nice amount of charges and then I can get started playing with it. Actually, while waiting, I noticed that I had some extra wafers, so I decided to craft some more solar panels and place them, but I actually noticed that I forgot to mention why did they have this weird shape here. Um, the kinetic motors may appear to be transparent, but I don't know if they really are. It may be, uh, the game may treat them as a solid block. So I decided to place my solar panels in a very, you know, like go around it to make sure that I completely clear it. So you can see this corner is completely looking at air. The middle block here is looking at the air. And if I go one block to the left, uh, it's not so certain. I think that's half a block or something. So I decided to also keep this line clear. And again, same here. This, the size of this uh, giant thingy, whatever it's called, kite, whatever, uh, seems to be kind of, it's not exactly, you can see, it appears to be a six by six, but it's not exactly, it's more like half, five and a half by five and a half. Uh, the borders of the block seems to be at the half block. I don't know if that's intended or not, I guess it is. Um, so yeah, I decided to assume that block is also a problem and simply take that as a spare space. So just adding a little bit more solar panels. And by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, the red power engines are actually quite intelligent. The more power that they can consume, the more power they will consume and generate more Minecraft Joules. And obviously there is a top limit, but since you can see my the batteries here don't don't build up a charge yet, I'm not hitting that limit yet. Not even close probably. One I think even one engine can be extremely can take extreme numbers of extreme no, number of uh, voltage and generate, uh, you know, Minecraft joules. So apparently I didn't have enough enough buildcraft energy. Well, I do have eight charges, so I guess that's enough. So let's try to improve the quality again. I don't like the fact that I the quality dropped when I charged it. So I don't, I don't know if it's intended or not. Let's see if I try to improve the quality. Will the charges drop? How does it work? See, because it seems to be, well, I don't know. I guess probably it will be a good idea to first uh, charge it up and only then improve the quality then, if that's the case. Although, bottom line, I have no idea what quality means. Like, does it mean it will be more successful when injected or what? It has no, I couldn't find any information about it. All right, so let's prepare the bees. I'd like to uh, change it to Valiant ones. I think I'm gonna go simply with Rocky Princesses. Now, I don't know if I can inject into more than one at a time, so I'm simply gonna try uh, five. The user interface allows me to place five bees, so I'm gonna play along and you can see actually six bees. So let's get six bees. I'm gonna play along and assume that you can try six at a time. Probably not gonna work actually, but yeah. So excellent quality, good enough. And then I can duplicate it. I don't really need to. I don't. Yeah, don't don't see the reason why. Because as far as I know, you only lose charges. You don't. You cannot lose the serum itself. Or I may be wrong. Oh, okay. I see how it works. So they will be queued to be changed next. Okay. So let's have let's say three valiant princesses. Now that process. Same as improving quality and same with most of those machines and templates and everything. Sometimes it may fail, but still use a charge. And this is where, this is the reason why you need a very high amount of liquid DNA and energy because more often than not, the process can fail and you may actually not find what you're looking for and you may need to invest some more liquid DNA and some more energy. This is why you, you, lo you need a very large bank of those, both liquid DNA and energy. Liquid NA, I'm doing pretty good right now. My real problem is uh, the energy, and you can see even I don't have enough energy to actually process those bees. I have a ton of them queued up, waiting to be processed, but none of them are being processed. Because I'm stealing so much energy in those batteries. Yeah. Okay, so let's see if the first try will be successful. Okay, just about to finish. Let's see what do I get. Probably will be a failed. Nope, got a successful attempt. 
Now, will it be trying to inject it, inject it once again into an already valid princess? Because then I would assume that if this was a successful process, yeah, it tries to inject it again. Okay, so I guess maybe that's only half valiant and still half rocky. And actually, if it's half rocky, that's kind of bad. Uh, where is my Bializer? Let's give it a quick look. See if that's indeed the case. Yeah, it's, it's she's still that princess is still half rocky. So let's uh, let again as the machine was already starting to do. Let's give it another go. Make that. Oh, I can't. Okay. So I guess what you can place it directly here. You can only place it here. Okay. That's odd. Um. So yeah, let's give it another get another go with this inoculator thingy and hopefully make it a pure valiant princess. Okay, so the process is about to finish a second time. Let's see if it's going to be successful this time as well. Uh, nope, doesn't seem like it. But then again, they just used the second charge. I had 8, then 7, and now 6. Now the thing is, I don't really want to leave this running uh, since I'm still, still not yet completely familiar with the, the, the way this machine works. Um, it may be successful and may get a Valiant Valiant uh, B, the, pr the princess that I'm looking for, but it may, I don't know, try to inject it once again. So I'm keeping a close eye here to make sure that it doesn't go crazy. And yeah. Okay, it's about to finish again. Let's see if I can get it. Yep, okay. Okay, nice. So it's working perfectly actually. The moment it finishes, it pushes it down. So I was actually while well, waiting for it, I noticed that this Valent Princess actually is a very nice bee. It's nocturnal, meaning it will work as well in night as well as is in the day. It also is has tolerance to temperature and to humidity both ways, times two. So actually, that's a very nice bee. It's an extremely nice bee, but I'm gonna use it as well as I would have used it otherwise. I'm gonna leave one more Rocky Princess here to change again. Hopefully those fire charges will make it. And as far as I know, the moment the charges run out, uh, the simply the serum will uh, will stop doing its job. Like it won't, it shouldn't break, as far as I know. So there shouldn't be any problem assuming those five charges will not make it. However, I don't see any real any real reason why not to. Alright, so as, as I've started previously, I'd like to get my Stark B. I did get, um, I think it was the Charmed Princess. Uh, I got the Charmed something, I remember. I got it off screen. Well, which one was it, though? I don't remember. I don't recall. I have a ton of those wintry guys. Uh, yeah, I got myself a Charmed Princess, which is it's great, but I'd like to get also a Charmed um, Drone. Again, since now I can actually extract the species out of every type of bee, I'd like to get a pure breed, uh, any, any bee, basically a pure breed of any type of bee, and then get a lot of drones out of it and extract the species when I can. So I'm gonna I'd like to try to get a charmed um, drone. So I'm gonna take this valiant princess and I'm going to combine it with a diligent bee. So let's get one. Uh, diligent, okay, and combine it here. Now, I'd like to actually create again another automated system for the for the frame that I was using. Where are they? These guys, the soul frames. They're actually quite interesting, quite an interesting type of frame, and they're very convenient. Unlike the the metabolic frames that I was using, these guys can be auto crafted. Can, they can be crafted normally. So I'd like to actually try and do something like that. Soul Sand, I can craft using uh, the Tome of Alkahest. I'm not a big fan of that. I think I'm simply going to supply the Soul Sand uh, manually on its own. Simply going to go and mine it in the nether and then uh, supply it. But the impregnated frame is something that I can automate and will be requiring a little bit more uh, work and actually would like to do it. So to get Im the impregnated frame, I'm going to need impregnated sticks, which will require wood um, and seed oil. So what I'm going to do is automate seeds to be processed by a centrifuge and then move into basically either a fabricator or any type of auto-crafting machine 
so the seed oil can be used to craft it. So let me think about it, see how I want to get it made, because I really do, I'm gonna <coughs> probably deal a lot more with <coughs> mutating bees in the future, and having it automatically crafted for me is a lot, very very convenient compared to what I have right now. So let's see, let me think about how I want to get this done. Okay, so I'm kind of working half blind here. I'm just gonna start uh, by setting up some sort of a template and then decide what I would like to do. So this is already creating a string, so there is no reason for me not to use it. So right nearby, I'm gonna create those impregnated frames and those will eventually create the actual soul frames. Now I'm gonna supply the actual soul sand here. Let's place, uh, let's place a couple of them just here as a placeholder so I know that this is the place. I think I actually barely have any. Yeah, I only have like five. I should really get some more. I wonder if you can find the soul soul sand material and make a world out of it. That will be an interesting thing. Okay, so this is again as, as a placeholder. It's just not going to craft anything yet. I should really go to sleep, but I'm really going to see what I want to do here. So pretty much I'm going to need to take care of making sticks. Now, very conveniently, uh, basically to make stick with carpenter, which is simply a simple block. However, I'm going to supply it with both Buildcraft Energy and Seed Oil. Now, very conveniently, I'm building this on a farm, so I can use some of the seeds that I have here, either process the melons, uh, the seeds themselves, or some pumpkin, be some pumpkin seeds. And then I'm going to get the Buildcraft Energy there. Which then again, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, I am creating the Buildcraft Energy already in this giant network, just actually pulling this pulling some more instant conduit should be shouldn't be too much of a problem it's not that not that cheap actually but it's not that big of a problem i am considering getting something completely different done which is gonna actually serve me in the future you know what i'm gonna do just that let me go on a small tangent here it's gonna be part of the project but it's kind of unrelated Birdcraft Energy can interact very nicely with Tesseracts because Tesseracts, they're energy Tesseracts. Uh, something to keep in mind is when you move energy through a Tesseract, you lose 25%. That's a strict number. If you try to move uh, 100 joules from point A to point B, at point B you're only going to get 75 joules and not 100. This is a loss that you're going to have to keep in mind. However, having said that, I still gonna it's gonna be very convenient for me to start having this power network available. So let me start getting there. I'm gonna need two tesseracts to begin with, or do I already have any by any chance? I have an item tesseract. I can probably uncraft it. No, I'm not gonna get the tesseract itself, apparently it doesn't recognize it. Which is the big issue. So let's see. I'm gonna need uh, two inch tesseracts, which gonna require uh, a bucket of liquid molten ender each, and the molten ender is made. Basically, we need two buckets, which means eight ender pearls, which I don't have. Let me quickly go and heal some endermen. Alright, so I quickly got myself a nice amount of ender pearls, but actually think about it, you guys know how to craft those tesseracts, so I'm gonna just create, get all the basic materials and then top it off uh, on screen. So I'm gonna start crafting it and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have all the basic materials I should need to actually complete it. Let's start by the, getting the actual carpenter and then the tesseracts themselves. Just got the two unattuned tesseracts, so I got all everything that I need. The locks for me gets the silver, the lead, and the rest on conductive condensed coil. And got this. And I can pretty much use it just as is. Uh, yeah, just like the way it is right now. I will need, however, an additional squeezer. Actually, just thought about it right now. So sturdy casing, tin, and some more glass. Not a real problem. One of those, and then one of those. Okay. And probably gonna need, yeah, let's take a filter. Filter and a bunch of tubes. Um, there we go. 
this should be enough uh, to actually get this small project going easily. All right, so the filter here will be right about here. It's going to be changed to look like this, and this will accept seeds. This will accept seeds only. Nothing else can pass through it. The moment anything can pass through it, so this uh, sugar cane got through, but now nothing can pass through it. Let's quickly dump it back inside. Now, whenever I get some seeds in here, they're going to be going to the top. Let me get small tubing network done. Actually, let's complete the project here and then decide where this tubing network is going to go. So this is creating cell frames. This is creating impregnated frame. So this is going to need the impregnated sticks. So my carpenter will go here. And I actually, that's a good question. Can these two machines interact together with each other without pumping uh, liquid from one another? I have a feeling they won't, but I won't know. Okay, this is going to energy first, so let's get that. So the plan is, actually I'm going to need a little bit, I'm going to need some conduits here. So let's get them. Because both of those machines are going to need some energy. Uh, let's connect it like this, and like this, and this will be the Tesseract. This will extract, and let's create the network already. So this will be the energy network number one. This is the Buildcraft energy. Actually, it doesn't really make sense. There is only, yeah, okay. Only planning to use one energy network anyway. This is gonna receive only. I'm gonna place the sending tesseract right here. This is at blue state, yep. This will be sending only. And there we go. Now those machines should receive some energy. This should be squeezing already, probably. There it is, it's squeezing. Uh, I have a feeling that. Yep, I'm going to need to move it manually, unfortunately. Okay, so it's going to require some modification. Let me take care of that. Okay, so I'm going to need to run small tests here. First, let's take this out. And let's have it quite... Uh, yeah, let's disconnect completely. So it's going to be kind of far away. This is temporary. So again, this is receives, receives Buildcraft energy and receives only. Okay, so this is going to need to move. This will go over here. Let me get a bunch of seeds so I can test it with. Okay, so let's squeeze some. And if I place a conduit like this, what happens? Nothing. If I place a redstone torch like this, what happens? Nothing. If I right click, it moves. Okay, this says to be empty because it's emptying from both. Or it's because of a redstone signal. Okay, so this will need to be even one further. This extracts, this fills up, this gives energy, and one last try, place one seed inside, gets squeezed, needs to be extracted with the redstone signal, and it's placed in here. Right? Right. Okay, so we can quickly move this and save one conduit, don't really need it outside like this. Simply place it over here and tur turn this to be extracting. Again, update the network to be receiving only the Buildcraft Energy Network. And again, remember that for every, uh, let's say, 10 joules, or let's have a nicer number, for every 100 joules that are being invested in those machines, actually, let's even go even nicer number. For every 75 joules that are being invested in those machines, 100 joules were invested from here were lost, uh, air quoting here, were lost from the network. So again, remember that there is a, 
at 25% loss. That, that's the price for the conveniency of wireless networks. Disregarding the fact that obviously creating this has its price of uh, Ender Pearls and everything, but yeah. Okay, so let's connect everything. Okay, should have an inner buffer, yep. And now I'm going to need some wood actually. Let's just dump a stack of seeds that I had. Gonna need some logs again. This is together with the uh, soul sand, something I'm gonna simply be placing manually for the time being. That's really a high level of automation that I'm not really gonna need at the moment. So here place the recipe that will look like this and simply dump the wood logs and it should start creating finally the impregnated uh, sticks whenever they finish whenever I get eight together with the string from here this will create an impregnated frame and together with the three soul sand this will create the soul sand frame soul frame now apparently the energy here is really low. This should go a little bit faster or is the problem with the seed oil? Yeah, more likely the energy. Yeah, I'm still having problems with energy. This is very much the top of my priority at the moment. Improving. Yeah, you can see that the process here cannot even finish because there isn't enough energy. Not even close to it. Yeah, this is completely empty. This is kind of empty. This should be actually quite full. Yeah, three-way full. This should be fine. This should be completely full. Yep. Because it's actually to be expected. The Buildcraft Energy Network disregard the fact that some batteries need more energy than others and will simply try uh, distributed, distributing the energy evenly between all sources. So, yeah. Just want to have a quick look to make sure that whenever this gets updated with eight sticks, the fabricator recognizes it and creates a frame. Let it, let's give it a second. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little bit of help. I have some spare liquid uh, seed oil here. So I'm gonna just help it a little bit. I'm gonna give it two cans that were just sitting here and simply dump them in here. For some reason, this happened. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm gonna need the Buildcraft hopper here. Okay, so there we go, we have a slight problem. The fabricator does not recognize this as a valid inventory, so there's gonna be, need to be some changes. Um, I can think about it very easily, actually. Yeah, let me get all the changes done, even right now. Right before ending the episode, I'd like to get a stable state where everything is working, at least. Uh, yeah, let me get that. Okay, so I first move everything to look like this, to look sli slightly more compact. So the first change is actually changing this tube to be a hopper. So actually we'd like to see something going properly. Uh, let's just, uh, I don't have any, yeah. If I dump this, right now I have 30, now I have, there we go. Now, again, uh, red power tubes and forestry machines don't really like each other very much. However, they do like Buildcraft hoppers because they are built their own Buildcraft. So, got this working. Now, um, from here, I brought a wooden transport pipe. I actually forgot to bring a redstone engine, so I'm gonna quickly get that, but also got a buffer. My good old trusty buffers. I'm gonna require one more redstone uh, energy engine one rest on the engine, and this should be working as expected, hopefully. Um, where is my engines? There we go. So just place it down, hopefully towards the right direction. There we go, and this should be extracting um, the sticks whenever they're done. Now, Carpenter are specifically designed to extract from here, not from here, because that's the inner inventory that will extract uh, items from. I think that can be accessed from the top and the bottom to insert materials, but 
uh, for extractions from the site. It will sim specifically extract from here. Let's just make sure. Uh, two sticks are done and it pumps them out. Yep, there we go. So now, I'm gonna, as usual, kickstart the fabricator, replacing some sticks in here. And already created two frames without me noticing. So there you go, got my frames. All right, so I did. Um, I tr I started doing my tier three machinery. Uh, that that's actually what I wanted to do this episode, but I'd like to get into more of it, a lot more. But I am still limited very much by uh, the energy problems that I have. However, now I still have. I now have convenient way to get soul frames. So. And of course, I didn't get what I wanted with the soul frames. Hopefully, I will. Alright, so thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.